In Lab 11, students define the term pure substance in their own words. They examine eight different samples of matter and determine whether each one is a pure substance or a mixture. They do this by devising their own investigative techniques using materials like water, a magnifying loop, pipettes, test tubes, and a magnet. A pure substance is any sample of matter that has a definite and constant composition with distinct chemical properties. They also can't be separated by physical means, only chemically. An example of a pure substance is water, also known as a compound. We know that it's a pure substance because it's made up of one or more elements, hydrogen and oxygen. More examples of a pure substance are silver or gold. These types of matter are elements found on the periodic table. Any solid, liquid, or gas found on the periodic table of elements is automatically categorized as a pure substance because they cannot be broken down into simpler forms using physical or chemical means. Let's take samples A through H out of the plastic box. When taking a closer look at sample A, even without a magnifying loop, we can see that the granite rock is not uniform throughout and it does not have a constant composition. The crystals and different colors are clearly visible. Therefore, it's a mixture. Sample B, a piece of slate rock, appears to have one consistent color. However, when looking through a magnifying loop, very fine grains of different minerals can be seen. Therefore, sample B is also a mixture. Sample C, white sand, appears to be a mixture because when looked at closely, you can see different shades of brown and yellow. Some grains are also shinier than others. Sample D is shaving cream. Even though it has a constant composition, we know that soap is made up of different chemicals. Using a magnifier, bubbles in the foam become visible. Sample E is a mixture of three immiscible liquids, vegetable oil, water, and shampoo. When we shake the bottle, the liquids mix together for a moment, but they eventually separate into layers again. We learned in lesson three that liquids with different densities will not mix. The least dense liquid will stay at the top, while the most dense liquid will sink to the bottom. Sample F is water and food coloring. When examining it closely, we see that it has a constant composition. However, this is a solution, which is an example of a homogeneous mixture. The water is the solvent and the food coloring is a solute, so it's not a pure substance. If we put a single drop of the solution onto a piece of paper with a pipette, the liquid spreads out quickly and then eventually evaporates. A ring of the red food coloring is left behind, which provides evidence that sample F is a mixture. Sample G is a mixture of sugar and zinc oxide. You can separate the two substances by adding water to the mixture in a test tube. The water becomes cloudy because the sugar dissolves in the solvent. The difference in solubility shows us that there are two different substances in this sample. Sample H is a sample of iron and sulfur. Using a magnet, the two substances can be physically separated. Therefore, this is a mixture. Some samples of matter were easier to classify as either a mixture or a pure substance because they were not well mixed. When matter appears to have a constant composition and the color looks uniform throughout, it becomes more difficult to determine whether or not that substance is truly pure. Therefore, it's important to investigate the question can this sample of matter be separated physically? If the answer is yes, then it can probably be classified as a mixture and further tests will need to be conducted. If the answer is no, then we can probably say that it's a pure substance. Pure substances like compounds or elements can only be separated chemically.